DITSON stands for Dual Frequency Identification Sonar. Basically what it does is transmit sound pulses underwater and then converts the returning echoes into a digital image. The RS, which stands for Adaptive Resolution Imaging Sonar, is just sort of the new generation of the Ditson. It's really built on the Ditson platform and expanded it. It uses different frequencies that have allowed for a much greater resolution and much better quality footage. And another big advantage is the post-processing capability. They've really upgraded their software to include some semi-automated features that really speed up processing time of the footage. Here we have an Aris unit. First off, we'll uh, look at all the components. We just have a regular PC here. An advantage of having our own fabrication lab is we've built a number of different mounting and rack systems. Basically the ditch and this hooks here on the bottom, the four little screws that go in, and we'll go ahead and throw that on there now. The advantage of using hydroacoustic techniques is that you can get video quality images in extremely dark or turbid water in zero light conditions. The sound wavelength in water is about 2,000 times longer than the visible light wave, so it allows it to go around suspended particles or things that would otherwise block a uh, light wave in water. But using this technology allowed us to produce images and uh, assess fish behavior that would otherwise not be possible with uh, just using an optical system or using diver surveys. This is uh, the cable here, a real strong cable that hooks into the, the Ditson right here. You got your little orange tabs so you know you're plugging them in in the correct orientation. And then we have an interface cable that goes from our junction box here to a cat style cable that plugs into the back of our computer. Unlike an optical system, using sonar camera, it allows for a length measurement of the footage. that You can drag and pull a length on anything in the footage. This allows for differentiation between fish species uh, with a high degree of confidence, as well as uh, you know range information on the camera, see how far, far away they are from the camera. We do definitely use it while under power with the boat. We're usually moving super slow. The slower you move, the better imagery, but you still gotta be able to control your boat. So here I have it hooked up to a mount that we'd made for a project requiring it to be deployed from a boat. The primary reason why I wanted it was for the mounting bracket and the, and the little uh, rotator here. So this right here enabled us to rotate the camera left and right. I added an actuator up here on top, which creates just a, a cylinder that pushes in and out, and that controls the, the tilting of the camera. The guy with the computer in his lap is able to sit here and control your, your tilt up and down just with this little hand switch and then movement left and right. And we're actually building a, a newer one where we're gonna actually use an upgraded newer box here so it kind of holds a better positioning when we got higher velocity water. It does not alter fish behavior in or around the camera. There's no lights, uh, there's nobody in the water. So you're really getting an unadulterated view of the fish behavior going on at a given time. We have a number of different lenses that allow for really fine tuning of the focus and the range of the camera. We have some concentrator lenses that allow for shallow water conditions uh, less than two feet at a distance of you know, 10, 20, 30 meters. There's some spreader lenses that allow for much deeper conditions. We've built a stationary mount, good for shallow streams or slow moving water. This mount also has pan and tilt capabilities, um, really allowing us to focus on any given area in a stream. By using all these mounting systems, we really have unlimited possibilities uh, with the camera. We not only can uh, follow a, a single fish uh, as it moves through the water column, and it's a great tool for habitat assessment. You have the ability to view underwater features that would otherwise not be able to be seen. We're really excited about what the future holds for this technology. I think as advancements in processing speed and software continue to develop and the resolution continues to improve, we really think this is the next step in fisheries research.